up late with us on a, a night of hot man-on-man -man debate action here in the United States. The thriller in Nashville, the second and final presidential debate, and probably the last time Joe Biden and Donald Trump will ever talk to each other. Congratulations, by the way, to those of you who bet Joe Biden would say malarkey. He did. We cheered. <laughs> Tonight, the debate tonight was not the WrestleMania event most people were expecting. I think maybe somebody swapped uh, Trump's Adderall out for Tylenol because <laughs> Donald Trump, by the way, is the only president who gets marks for good behavior. He's like, oh, he's like when you bring a, a two-year-old on a plane. He tried very hard to resemble a human being tonight. The topics uh, for this debate were American families, race in America, fighting COVID-19, climate change, national security, and dipping sauces. The president requested the last one. Unfortunately for Trump, he knows very little about any of those subjects. The only way Donald Trump could have really won this debate is if the topics were squandering your inheritance, shower head pressure, and combing your hair like this. That's what I did. I thought the moderator did a very good job. Kristen Welker uh, handled them well. One of the reasons the president is so hard to wrangle is he just makes things up. He, Trump has been averaging, someone counted this up, more than 50 false statements a day. Most people don't even make 50 statements a day. It would, it would be almost impossible to lie 50 times. And it, you'd have to start lying as soon as you wake up. But he's good at it. It's really what he does best. The president's advisors were tonight begging him to be more likable, which, you know, it's like asking Boba Fett to smile more. But I, I have to admit, he was funny. He did get off some good lines. As far as uh, my relationships with all people, I think I have great relationships with all people. I am the least racist person in this room. <laughs> Give him credit where it's due. <laughs> Only Donald Trump can look at a half black, half Native American moderator and say, I'm the least racist person in this room. He is an increasingly angry and belligerent man. We know that. But the debate commission, they kept things in check by adding a mute button, and it worked. For the most part, it worked. The candidates were given two minutes of what was supposed to be uninterrupted time. But you know, Trump always finds a, a way to work himself in. We just wore these masks. President's own advisors have told him we could save 100,000 lives. And we're in a circumstance where the president thus far and still has no plan, no comprehensive plan. <laughs> what I would do is make sure we have. All right, but he didn't speak. Tonight we saw Melania Trump for the first time in like three weeks, and, uh, and we won't see her again until moving day, probably. <laughs> After the debate, Melania tried to take the mute button home. It's, uh, it's hard to believe, but Donald Trump still hasn't released his tax returns. Those tax returns he hadn't released last time he was running for president, he still hasn't released them. But I think we're going to get to see them pretty soon. What's going on here? Why don't release your tax return or stop talking about corruption? President Trump, your response. First of all, I called my accountants, underwrote it. I'm going to release them as soon as we can. I want to do it. And it'll show how successful, how great this company is. He called his accountants. They're very busy at H&R Block this time of year. It's, uh, if this country were a company right now, it would be Radio Shack. We're going to see, like, three Avatar sequels before we see those tax returns. Uh, Biden also called on Trump to own up to his many egregious mistakes when it comes to the virus, and he almost kind of did. And you say, I take no responsibility. Let me talk about your two... Excuse me, I take, very full, I take full responsibility. It's not my fault that it came here. It's China's fault. <laughs> That's, I take full responsibility for not being responsible. That's what they call a you a culpa. That's, uh... There was so much nonsense. It's even... Trump, his defense of putting children in cages is, you should see how nice these cages are. Honestly, that was his... Joe Biden uh, took the week off to gear up for tonight's debate, whereas the president warmed himself up by going after Leslie Stahl. You know, at first, when I saw Trump and Stahl trending on Twitter, I just assumed he got stuck on the toilet. But it turned out to be the lady from 60 Minutes. Uh, and on Tuesday, Trump got angry and cut his interview with Leslie Stahl short. And today, he released 
the full interview himself, the dictator's cut, if you will. They had their own cameras rolling at the White House, and I guess they wanted to, to take CBS's ratings away, so they beat them to the punch. Why he would want more people to see this, I don't know, but here's how Mr. Tough Guy got going off the bat. Are you ready for some tough questions? You're going to be fair. Are you I'm going to be fair. Just be fair. But last time, I remember you saying to me, bring it on, bring it on. No, I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for fairness. That's all. You're going to get fairness. But you're okay with some tough questions. No, I'm not. You're not okay with tough questions. Well, to be fair, you, you don't ask Biden tough questions. <laughs> he is such a child. Nothing is fair. Everyone's against him. His parents really did a number on this one. Thanks again, Fred and Mary Trump. And the back and forth with Leslie Stahl, it didn't get much better from there. I, I didn't want to have this kind of thing. Of course you did. No, I didn't. Well, did. no, I didn't. well, then you brought up a lot of subjects that well, I said were I'm inappropriately ask you brought tough up. Questions. They were inappropriately but brought up right from the beginning. No, your first question was, "This is going to be tough questions." Well, it is. when you set up the inter your first statement You're was the president. Don't you think me. you no, should no, no. be accountable to Listen, the American people? Your first statement to me: "This is going to be tough questions." Well, I don't mind that, but when you set up the interview, you didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, if I had known you were going to ask tough questions, I would have done the interview with Mario Lopez instead. <laughs> he was supposed to then stick around for a joint interview with Mike Pence, but he bailed on that and left the vice poodle by himself. But I will say, you have to hand it to Mike Pence. This is a man who is masterful when it comes to kissing an ass. So what just happened with the president? Uh, Leslie, uh... President Trump is a man who speaks his mind. I think it's one of the great strengths that he's had as president of the United States is that the American people always know where they stand. And he's always ready to make the case for the American people and the case for the progress that we've made over the last three and a half years. <laughs> good boy, very good boy. I am completely fascinated with Mike Pence. I, for a not very interesting guy, he's so interesting. So we got in touch with his team and they hooked us, believe it or not, we have a very special guest tonight, and I'd like you to welcome the Vice President of the United States. Hello, Mr. Pence. Hello, Jimmy. Pleasure to be here. You left us and keep a son of a gun. Oh, well, thank you for joining us. Did you watch the debate tonight? Yes, of course. I watched it at home with my wife, who I call mother. My actual mommy was there, too. Oh. And I believe my dad was looking down on us with Father God. Oh, okay. We got a call afterwards from Daddy, which is my nickname for the president. So I put him on speaker, and me, my wife, mother, mommy, dad, and Father God listened to Daddy talk about how great he was. <laughs> well, that sounds um, confusing, is what it sounds like. It was. Yeah. Very confusing. But the evening ended beautifully with me and mother lying in our twin beds six feet apart. Oh, what, for social distancing? No, no, no. The six feet are to leave room for the Lord. Oh. You, uh, real Americans, Jimmy, don't uh, live like you godless Caligulans in Hollyweird sharing a futon with George and Amal Clooney. Uh, it's, it's a mall Clooney. It's a mall Clooney, actually. Yeah, you, you say a mall, I say a mall. You say, I say anal, and I believe you say anal. Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> well, let's stay on the subject here. Uh, Mr. Pence, the, the debate was uh, important because as of right now, you and the president are not polling well, particularly with African-American voters. Wrong, Jimbo, wrong. We actually just received some major, major endorsements from prominent leaders in the black community. Uh, have you heard of 50 cents? Uh, he, yes, uh, it's 50 cent, 50 and cent. Ice tray. Uh, ice cube, ice but tray, yes. Is I'm that a sorry. fly? Yeah, sorry, I got a lot of vermin hanging around here still. Oh, well, oh my gosh, that's really kind of gross. Is uh, What is it? Oh, my God. A little water bug. Oh, oh no. Water bug there. Oh, wow, well, that's guy. absolutely... It's chicken. I call that guy chicken. <laughs> what the right hell? Here. <laughs> why a little is rat there for you, Jim. Why is this stuff on you all the time? <laughs> the president insists I keep a sloppy joe in my pocket in case he gets peckish. Oh. Never wants to be any more than... Five feet from snacky poop. Okay, well, you know what, uh, Mr. Vice President, 
I do want to ask you about the pandemic. Cases are surging in 38 states. Uh, and as the head of the coronavirus task force... Coronavirus, ha, uh, what a crazy time that was. Mm -hmm. Remember when we were washing our fingers all the time? Glad that's behind us. Oh, but it's, it's not behind us. It's still going on. Wrong again. Not only has coronavirus been eradicated from the Earth, the Space Force has just blown it out of the cosmos. Astronauts can now take their masks off on the moon. No, they cannot do that, and they should definitely yes. not do yes, that. Yes, they can. Yeah, well, yeah. I, no, no, they can't. But I do yes. want to thank you for your time tonight, uh, Mr. Vice President. It was my pleasure. We may disagree on many things, but there is one thing I know we both agree on with all our hearts. On November 3rd, don't forget to throw your ballots in the river. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Just toss them in. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. I appreciate call that. Call me Penny. Okay, call I will call you Penny. Thank you, Penny. Uh, that, Penny, uh, that's Penny for you. Who do? Did you know that Mike Pence? Did you know he was born without a neck? Oh wow! It's an incredible story, actually. Yeah. The election is now what? 11 days away. And already there's been foreign meddling from Russia, which we expected, but also from Iran, which where the hell did they come from? Iran, nobody expected. This is like on The Bachelorette when Nick suddenly showed up out of nowhere to try to win Caitlyn back. <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, Barack Obama is back too. Barack Obama headlined a drive-in rally for his former vice president yesterday. He was great. Uh, it's been quite some time since we saw the former president at a rally, and it was very different from the rallies given by our current president. So we thought it would be instructive and maybe even fun to compare and contrast. Man, it is good to be back in Pennsylvania. This is a big crowd. What we do these next 13 days will matter for decades to come. 13 days, can you believe it? He might not know what working people are going through here in Pennsylvania. And then I said to the people in the plane, got more television sets than any plane in history. Right now, you can vote for my friend Joe Biden. Sleepy Joe Biden. Joe learned early on to treat everybody he meets with dignity and respect. Did crazy Nancy go crazy and the swamp creatures? We're not going to have a president that goes out of his way to insult anybody who doesn't support him. Adam Schiff, this guy, the watermelon head. Really stupid, dumb people, the never Trump, these clowns. Crazy Bernie. Pocahontas. Or threaten them with jail. That guy should be locked up. Lock him up. Lock her up. Lock him up. Lock her up. Lock her up. Lock her up. <laughs> They embolden other people to be cruel and divisive and racist. Sean Hannity, great Lou Dobbs, Laura, great Lou Dobbs, Tucker, Lou Dobbs has been great. Lou Dobbs has been great. This president wants full credit for the economy he inherited. Under my administration, we built the greatest economy in the history of the world. Zero blame for the pandemic that he ignored. This is the China plague, the China virus. America is a good and decent place. We've just seen so much noise yum, bum, bum, bum. and nonsense. Wiggle, waggle, wiggle. I'm asking you to remember what this country can be. They'll open the floodgates to radical Islamic terrorism. What it's like when we treat each other with respect and dignity. Every one of them had a hand on a different part of my body. Let's bring this home. I love you, Philadelphia. The American dream is dead. Oh, well, I think I might vote for Obama now. The big guns are coming out. We're less than two weeks away from the election. There's more than just a uh, presidency online. There are so many atrocities coming out of this White House every day. It's easy to get distracted, but I want to bring us back to focus on something we can't afford to forget, and that is health care. The vast majority of this country agrees that health insurance should cover Americans with pre-existing conditions. But the Republican Party, and that includes the president and members of Congress, the only plan they have is to do away with protections for pre-existing conditions. If they're allowed to do that, millions of people are gonna suffer. This is not a partisan issue. Four out of five Americans want this, Democrats and Republicans. Two thirds of Republicans want this, but the vast majority of Republicans in office don't. They say they do, they'll tell you they do, but their actions say the opposite. So my wife Molly made a video that deals with our experience when it comes to pre-existing conditions. And we'd like you to watch this and pass it around to anyone who may have forgotten what this election is really about. I 
don't get many things right the first time. In fact, I am told that a lot. Now I know all the wrong turns, the stumbles and falls brought me here. And where was I before the day that I first saw your lovely face? Now I see it. We're going to be doing a health care plan very strongly and protect people with pre-existing conditions.